the fair value measurement hierarchy. Let's go through this. What is it? What does it mean? Is it just a pretty shape? No, it's much more than that. Let's use examples as well. So here I am going to use a few examples. Level one inputs. What could a level one input be? Well, I'm going to say that this could be a stock. And what does that mean? We will describe this and more. Observable prices, let's say this is an over-the-counter bond. What does that mean? We'll talk about that. And lastly, and I'll put it in also other terms, right? So maybe residency, maybe your house. And this, I love the example for a level three of something really odd and quite different from everything else. So let's say this is a um, you know, new age space company, something completely outlandish, but for good reason. Now this is valuation, right? Fair value. How do you determine the fair value of something? Okay, you have one share of Apple stock. How do you determine that? Well, you Google Apple stock and it'll tell you one share of Apple stock is worth, I don't know, $100, whatever it is. That's a quoted price because it's a easily accessible quoted price, meaning I could trade one share of Apple stock for another share of Apple stock. They are completely identical to each other. And it's quickly quoted, super updated, right? Like it's updated by the second. And that's pretty, pretty easy to value. Level, as you go down, it gets a little bit more hard to value. So that's a quoted price. You get a quote from a market. Observable price. These are prices you can observe. So you can kind of see, but they're not just given to you right away. So let's say your house, right? Let's start with residency. I mean, yeah, you kind of have an idea of what the value of your house is, right? But like, you're not entirely, you, you don't know immediately. Yeah, you can look on Zillow, but I mean, that's just a company valuing your home. That's not, you know, really a, a, a something you could go off of. Uh, you'd have to do research. You'd have to compare to similar houses, right? Observable, you can observe. So I would, to get the general idea of a value of my house, I would compare it to the homeowner next to me in their house. That's kind of how I would observe they get the value of my house. And over-the-counter bond, this was also, you know, you can trade bonds over the market, but over-the-counter bonds, these might be, you know, secondary markets. So uh, private companies trading bonds. Well, what's the value of that bond? You'd have to compare it. So a lot of these questions that ask about level two, we'll talk about similar. The word similar, observable. So that is what you're going to be seeing there. Lastly, something this, right? So let's just say SpaceX was the only space company. I know you got Blue Origin, you've got other companies. Now, what's the value of that company? You don't really know because there's com it's quite unique, right? I mean, yes, people give values to it, but in reality, it's just so unique that you kind of have to come up with its own valuation metric. It's unobservable. You cannot observe something similar, right? So again, this is under the impression that there's only SpaceX, only one space company, um, right? Like this could be a super unique amusement park. This could be a super unique oil rig. This could be a new technology. Basically anything you cannot look somewhere else and, and see a value for. So this is a level three input, unobservable. These are our three inputs, right? As you go down, it gets a little more difficult to value. This you can immediately level one, you can just look online for the price. So those will be lots of free points on the exam if you can memorize that. And I definitely recommend doing so.